It was extremely difficult to get a visa for Hadi. A lot of athletes around the world have tried to get visas. Unfortunately, most of them are denied visas. With bodybuilding, it's so independent and it's so difficult because it's a sport, but some countries don't recognize it as a sport. It made it that much more difficult to be able to get him into the United States. So we were on our own. We worked countless hours on making sure we did everything possible to be able to get his visa. Getting with the right people, making sure that people understand that there was a huge demand to be able to see Hadi Chopin in the United States and be able to be on the best stage with the best athletes in the world. A lot of people don't understand how difficult this was. I don't even know of anyone who even had a presidential proclamation waiver visa given to them. So I don't even know if there was one that existed before the one that we were able to get for Hadi Chopin. That was our first win, was getting him into the United States. But once we got him here, there was tears of joy. There was just really, really a, a huge amount of excitement that hit the internet. We literally felt like we broke the internet overnight. And we posted the pictures of Hadi and Andy in San Francisco. But now reality has hit. Now that he's here, is he going to be doing 212 or is he going to be doing open? He had qualified in Korea under the 212 division and he had qualified in Vancouver by winning the open division. Now we had to decide, do we want to go after a 212 title or do we want to try to go up against the best of the best in the open division? What some people fail to realize is that Hadi had very little hope after being denied for the last four years entry to the United States. But when he came to the United States, he wasn't preparing properly. Because he had been denied entry and he thought that there was no chance, little to no chance that he was going to be allowed to come and compete, his diet suffered, his training suffered, the stress level was at an all-time high. Basically gives you the ability to say, hey, look, I'm kind of mentally checked out and I really believe that he was partly checked out because he had zero hope of making it into the show this year. The reason why it took a while to decide between the 212 and the open class was because I knew when Hadi had gotten to the United States that he had lost some muscle compared to Vancouver. I knew that due to the stress, due to all of the different commitments he had between Vancouver and when he had his visa to come to the United States, he had a lot of different distractions. There was about two to five pounds of muscle that I felt that he had lost. So I wasn't 100% in the right mental space to say, yeah, he can turn around and do the open class. So we had to feel it out. And as he was training with me the two weeks prior to the show, I felt he got better and better and that's when we decided a week out to go ahead and do the open class. I realized there was a lot of new obstacles in working with an Iranian bodybuilder who not only didn't speak any English, but he also is hearing impaired. So he has to mostly lip read. He has to lip read in Farsi. 
I also had Paul here working at Evagen, who could also help out with that because he speaks Farsi fluently. We were able to communicate and be able to take care of his needs and being able to get him from point A to point B and making sure that overall communication was there. But it was much more difficult than having one of my previous bodybuilders in town who could take care of themselves. When you're dealing with somebody who's hearing impaired and doesn't speak English as well, it's not only a culture shock, but it's also a huge communication barrier. It was very, very difficult, but again, we overcame it just like we did everything else. A lot of people are realizing that the Iranian community, not just the people that are based in Iran, but the Iranian community gather around their athletes. And they do so at such a high level that there's a tremendous amount of pressure that's put on the athlete. All eyes were on Hadi and making sure that he was going to try to elevate not only him, but where he comes from. I'm proud of Hadi because not only was he able to show a great physique, but he showed respect to the audience as well as the other competitors. Some people were asking, why did Hadi Chopin salute Dexter Jackson, 2008 Mr. Olympia? Because Dexter is an icon in the sport, and culturally, we are raised to be able to respect people who have earned that kind of respect that Dexter has after 20 years of competing at the highest level. I feel that that really helps elevate all of the competitors to be able to show, hey look, this is how you're supposed to respect one another, so you can go to war on stage and battle it out and pose down, but at the end of the day, it's about a mutual respect. Ladies and gentlemen, your people's champion at the 2019 Olympia, Hadi Oh, how Chupan. about that? I want to thank everybody who had gone on Instagram, who had gone on Facebook, and was super excited about his accomplishment. Thank you so much because I have never seen such sentiment that's been so positive in the sport until now. The most exciting part is the fact that this is just the beginning of this journey. Now, you're going to be able to witness the whole process evolve before your eyes. So, sit back and get ready, because you're going to witness a whole new version of Hadi Chopin in 2020. Keep it alive, we go!